Hi, I'm Jay Obernolte, president of Farsight Studios, and we're here in our offices in beautiful Big Bear Lake, California. Today I want to walk you through all of the steps involved in taking an actual pinball table and recreating that table in video game form. So we've been doing video games for 23 years. We got our start doing pinball video games in 2004. We uh, had a, an action puzzle game called Mojo that used a rolling ball physics engine, and we thought that would be great for a pinball game. So we tried it, and it was terrible. It was a, an absolute disaster. It uh, worked just fine. It felt nothing like pinball, and so we had to totally scrap it and rewrite it from scratch as a pinball engine. And that was our first experience with just how complicated and sophisticated a physics engine needs to be to do a good job with pinball physics. It's, uh, there's a lot of subtlety that goes into it. We are dedicated to delivering the most authentic experience possible when we recreate a pinball table, and that uh, involves a lot of different steps from acquiring the pinball table, taking the pinball table apart to make sure that we understand uh, all the, the various uh, components, the way they fit together, uh, getting uh, digital photography and images of all the different uh, elements of the pinball table, um, modeling the pinball table in three dimensions with our modeling software, texturing the textures that go on to that pinball table that create the, the flat surfaces that you see, and then all of the programming and engineering that goes into it, the ROM emulation, the engineering uh, the, for each individual platform that we're deploying on, uh, the design that goes into, we have a, a very intricate process of tuning all the physics on each ramp, each flipper, each bumper to make sure that the experience is authentic, and then the final process of packaging it and delivering it to you. Hi, my name is Bobby King. I am the Director of Development and Designer of the Pinball Arcade, which will be coming out this January for a multitude of platforms. Uh, at Farsight Studio, we first came out with the Gottlieb Collection and then the Williams Collection, and they got great reviews, and you know we love making pinball games. Uh, so then we went out and got the Stern Collection uh, license and then the Bally license. And one of the things that we're very excited about is that we are also getting ancillary licenses so that if you combine the tables that we already have the rights to, you know, through Bally, Williams, uh, starting Gottlieb, now with the ancillary licenses uh, and the number of tables that we're going to be coming out with, we're going to be covering something like 90% of like the top 40 games of all time. Uh, we're really excited about it and our fans are too. When we make a video game, we need to be careful not to infringe on anyone's intellectual property rights. And what that means is, if you're going to use uh, a, uh, a title or a name or a picture that someone else has put effort into, you need to make sure you have the permission from that person to, to, uh, to include that material in your product. In the case of a pinball table, we have a lot of different licenses potentially involved. First of all, you have a license from whatever company made the pinball table. They designed it. Uh, their name is on the pinball table. So you can't just reproduce that pinball table without at least crediting and probably paying money to the people involved. Quite often a table manufacturer would pick a popular movie license and whatever movie was coming out at the time they'd build a pinball table around that movie and so that's an additional right that we have to secure in order to recreate that pinball table and often it's it's multiple licenses that are involved. So for example a movie we have to get not only the the rights to use the movie version but also if that movie is based on some intellectual property we have to go to the original intellectual property holder and, and secure those rights and often there'll be actor likeness rights that we have to worry about so for example if uh, the actors have their pictures on the back glass or on the play field we might have to go to the individual actors and secure licenses to use their likenesses and uh, often there are music licenses that we have to get as well there'll be music that's in the game that's, uh, that was included in the original table. And of course, we want to be as authentic as possible, so we want to include that music if we can. So we'll have to go track down who has the rights to those songs, uh, both the composition and the performance rights, and secure those licenses. Here at Farsight, we are all really devoted pinball uh, fans. And uh, one of the things that pains us is that pinball is such a difficult thing for most people to experience now. You have to go to an arcade and, and uh, the tables, they may or may not be in the greatest shape and anyone who's owned a pinball table recognizes how difficult it is to keep those pinball tables in uh, running condition. They're just really electromechanical marvels. They've got miles and miles of wire, they've got hundreds and hundreds of lights and switches and kickers and everything has to be working per perfectly uh, for that pinball table to function. My name's Norman, I'm a producer and an audio designer here. Uh, and one of the things I get to do is I get to take care of the real-world pinball machines here. Um, 
uh, I have to keep them going so that anybody can come down here at any time and check a table that we're working on to make sure that we've got the feel right, things are, all the rules are right, uh, all the tuning is right, and not the easiest job in the world because they break down a little bit more than we expected them to. These tables aren't the same at all, and they all have a different challenge when we're trying to make them. When we first get a table in, we take a lot of pictures from every angle. Then the 2D artists start working on the case and the back glass. Then I take all the pieces off the play field. Those pieces go to 3D artists that will model them into objects. There's a lot going on on these tables. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of lights. There's a lot of switches going off. The way we make sure we get all of that right is we're actually emulating the chipsets from these tables. Let me show you. One of the pieces of technology that we're really proud of is our ROM emulation technology. This is something we developed a couple of years ago when we brought our Williams collection to PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. A lot of the later pinball tables had uh, computers that ran inside the pinball table that controlled the rule sets, all the light sequences, the dotmation display, all the scores that would pop up. It's very sophisticated and there's a lot going on. And so they required a little, uh, what by modern standards would be a pretty primitive computer running inside the pinball table to make this work. So to get the most authentic video game experience possible of that table, we wanted to be able to take that exact computer program and be able to emulate it on whatever device we're running on. And that's what we do. We actually take the computer chips that are on the motherboard of these pinball tables and we emulate them on a cycle by cycle basis. So what you're seeing in our pinball tables is an exact pixel perfect recreation of what's going on on the original table. This is where all the action happens. This board here is more like a regular computer. CPU's right there. This one carries all the rules, how all the lights flash. This one up here is where all the sounds are and all the voices. And then this one here carries the power all over the table. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. When you think about uh, something that you can hold in the palm of your hand, an iPhone or an Android phone or a uh, Sony PS Vita, is emulating all of the chips that were on that original pinball table. It, it really shows you the progress of technology. It's amazing if you think about it. Hi, I'm Mike Field, our director here at Farsight Studios, here to talk about our upcoming multi-platform pinball epic, the Pinball Arcade. This is real pinball. The art production process is focused 100% on simulation. We approach each table with the respect it deserves and has earned among the legions of pinball fans. And for us in the art crew, this means accuracy. We take literally hundreds of photographs and shots and measurements down to the minutest detail to make sure we get it right. We get schematics and original documentation and manuals, and we proceed piece by piece with care. Typically, we'll start with a cabinet graphic, and then we lay in the play field. This gives us the foundation guide for the rest of the placement of the pieces. Each table has a wonderful variety of great original art and unique play mechanics, and so each table for us is a new challenge. Artists will be assigned a series of table objects split by level of complexity and the different types of modeling required, and each piece is handcrafted to the millimeter. This involves 3D geometry, what's called an unwrap phase, which is kind of technical, but it means that each part of the surface gets its own unique mapping coordinate upon which we place the texture maps. The texture maps are partly hand-painted and part photo-referenced to make sure we get it exactly right. As the pipeline of objects flow in, they go to another artist who's responsible for putting them all together. Unfortunately, unlike the original pinball manufacturers, we don't have miles and miles of cable to deal with. But like the real pinball tables, we do put just as much care into every piece. So it's conditioning, it's scale, the position, motion, and appearance are exactly right. Finally, after weeks of labor, these pieces arrive all combined together to me for final conditioning. What this means is a cohesion pass where we add lighting, we touch up the texture maps, we put in shadow maps, and make sure that everything blends together and looks like the original table would. What I love about our product is that when you play the tables on the end device, whether it's from the little Apple and Android uh, devices, through the tablets, uh, all the way up to the Xbox 360 and PS3, you immediately get the sense that you're playing real pinball. This is not fantasy pinball. These are the original tables from the old arcades, and uh, they've been put together and developed with the assistance of the original manufacturers. It's the real deal, folks. I love it. I also wanted to show you some of the stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Over here, I will show you what my primary role is on, on making these games, and that is tuning the physics 
Uh, we've, we've come a long way since the Gottlieb collection, improving it for the Williams collection, and now we've you know, revamped it again. We can now make the ball move a lot faster, and we have different ways to manipulate gravity. Um, those are two of the best things that are going to make our game stand out as far as um, being the best pinball simulation of all time. In the past, uh, as far as gravity was concerned, I could only like increase gravity, make things push down more, and now I can actually angle and tilt things on uh, the table, which gives a much better pinball feel. Like if a ramp shot is a little too steep or not steep enough, um, and I get the ball moving a lot faster or slower. Right here, this menu is showing you some of the physics for each of the objects on the table. For example, how bouncy like each of the rubbers are, uh, the flippers, the walls, the, the metals. Um, I can tune, and I have to tune, to get the table to feel right, each thing separately. If I come down here, I can turn off um, the table, and now you're just seeing the collision mesh of the inner wall um, up here at the top of the table. If a shot is coming off at the wrong angle, or if it's not hugging it, um, I, I, I take a look at this. I can manip manipulate the numbers in my spreadsheets, and if something is still wrong, then I'll go to the artist, and we'll have to change uh, the way that the, the polys are affecting the ball. And I have all sorts of different transfer velocities and you know, rolling uh, physics that allow it to hug and allow it to bounce. And personally, I think um, our physics have already been you know, hailed, the, the Williams collection was already hailed as like the best pinball simulation. But I think because of now and the fact that we can get the ball moving a lot faster and we can get gravity feeling a lot better. Um, I really think that this collection, not just with the number of tables that we can include, um, but the way that the game is going to play and feel, I, I'm pretty confident it's going to be the best pinball game ever made. Another piece of technology that we use at Farsight, and we've always specialized in in our whole history, is cross-platform development. Because this game is not only going to be on all the major consoles, but on mobile devices such as Android and iPhone, uh, there are a whole bunch of different uh, screen resolutions and aspect ratios that we have to cover. So for each of those, because we can't put our test mode into every device there is, uh, what we do is we, on a Macintosh, we have in a little window a simulation of what it's going to look like on each device. I toggle through the different devices and then using camera coordinates, which all the X, Y, Z and the X angle, Y angle, and Z angle and, and the zoom, I customize the cameras for each aspect ratio. On each device and on the consoles we have the ability to play uh, in, in portrait, what we call it, and in landscape as well. When we do a video game for a publisher on a console, we will do it not just for a single console, such as the PlayStation 3, but we'll do it simultaneously cross-platform on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Nintendo Wii, perhaps the Sony PS Vita, uh, the Nintendo 3DS handheld, and we have built technology that's taken many, many years for us to perfect that allows us to deploy content very inexpensively across a lot of different platforms. And the reason that that is important is that to undertake a project like the Pinball Arcade uh, requires a big investment from us. There are a lot of different licenses we have to get, a lot of investment that we have to make uh, in creating each pinball table, and the more platforms that we can deploy our product on, uh, the more consumers we can reach, and the lower price we can charge people because we don't have to sell as many on each platform to be able to recoup our costs. So we're very proud of our ability to deploy on all these different platforms. And, uh, I think consumers will enjoy it because uh, you as our customer are going to be playing it on whatever device you happen to own rather than having to go uh, seek out a device that we're compatible with. For me, it's very much like traveling into a bygone era of arcades when pinball was king. It's hard not to love these old machines. I think, in a sense, we're archiving and preserving the legacy of pinball, and at the same time, we aim to bring these amazing machines alive again for a whole new generation. We bring everything except the smell of sweat and bubblegum, you can bring that yourselves.